as we continue our review in in these problems we're asked to use factoring to help solve uh, quadratic equations in the first case the problem has already been factored so we, we will apply the zero product property because we have a product of two things that is equal to zero one of those things must be equal to zero if neither of them are then of course the product would not be zero so 2x minus 1 is equal to 0, or else x minus 7 is equal to 0. Solving 2x minus 1 is equal to 0, we would add 1 to both sides and divide both sides by 2, so x could be 1 half, or x could be equal to 7. We can plug each of those choices back in here, x being 1 half, 1 half, and find out that that's equal to 0, and x is equal x is equal to 7, 7, 7, and find out that that's equal to 0. Now to solve the next problem, we do need to do the factoring. x squared plus x minus 30 is equal to 0. Factoring that polynomial, we need to find two numbers that multiply together to give us 5 and subtract from each other to give a positive x. So now we have an equation that we can apply the zero product property to either x minus x plus 6 is equal to 0 or x minus 5 is equal to 0. So now we can solve those two equations to get two solutions to our original equation. So our two solutions are x is equal to minus 6 or x is equal to 5. In these next two problems, we're supposed to simplify each rational expression. So we want to look for a way to factor the top and the bottom and see if there is a common factor that uh, can be canceled on the top and the bottom. In other words, can these rational expressions be reduced? I can see that a 4 factors out of the top, so I've got 4 times an x plus 6. The bottom, <clears throat> a 4 does not factor out, so the only factoring that I'm interested in in the bottom is if an x plus 6 factors out. That simplifies the factoring process because now I can see that I've got to have a 2x plus a 1, and I need to check to make sure that the middle term turns out properly. And when I check for the middle term, I do get a 13x, so that does factor properly. The x plus 6 and the x plus 6 will cancel from the top and the bottom, leaving us with a simplified form 4 divided by 2x plus 1. The same process will be applied to problem 22. We need to factor the top, factor the bottom, and see if there's a common factor that can be canceled. Once you factor one of them, here I've factored the top, it's an x plus, oh, that's not right. Okay, I corrected it. You need to make sure that, that, you're, that you have factored it properly. So you multiply this out, you get a k squared, you get a minus 8, and the middle term turns out to be a positive 2. So I've factored the top properly. Once you've factored one of them, you only care if the other one has one of those factors or not. So that simplifies your, your choices for factoring. Now be careful, I've been a little clumsy with my variables here. <clears throat> the variable in this problem is k. The top factor is to be a k plus 4 times a k minus 2. I'm only interested if the bottom has one of those two factors. I'd actually tried well, uh, an x plus 4 and it doesn't uh, divide evenly, but x minus 2 does. And so now the x minus 2 times the x minus 2 will cancel. So the uh, simplified expression is k plus 4 over k plus 10.